Hello, welcome to this Unity tutorial video. I'm going to show you how to create 2D uh, landscapes or platforms like this one, uh, which are nice and solid, you can jump around them, using the Perlin noise math function. And this was a question asked by, um, not this guy, <laughs> where is it? <laughs> we'll need that later, you go back down there. We need this guy, Drope. Thank you for watching my previous video, and you've asked, um, how can I do math Perlin noise on a 2D map? Hopefully, hopefully this is what you mean by 2D map. If you meant a bird's eye view one, let me know. <laughs> and I'm really sorry for wasting your time with this one. It might help you out. At least we get some 2D Perlin noise working. So, uh, what, we would, what we need to do then is just create a very simple 2D, 2D um, view uh, or project in, what am I talking about? Just create a 2D project in Unity. <laughs> We've got a simple 2D view, and I've downloaded the standard assets so that in my, where are we, in my folder, I've got um, the standard assets where you can go into 2D and go into prefabs and then drag yourself in a, in a character, and then you can move around your scene and test things out. Maybe you already know what you're doing in 2D, so you've made your own characters and things. You don't, you know, you don't need me to tell you how to do that. Um, so what we've got in our scene is a camera, your character, which I've called me, and then um, this script, which I've called Perlin Terrain. So it's just a transform, an empty transform with a script attached to it, and this is what will create this 2D terrain. So. You need to create yourself a block, that's just a 2D sprite, um, which I've, I've given the size of 2x2, two two, and then this script in C Sharp. So let's open up the script. That's it. This is about six lines of code is what you'll need to actually put in. And all we need is a, a game object variable to store our block type which I'm calling B type for block type. And if we go back into our, uh, back into Unity, we can see the script here. And what I've done is populated that game object, that variable with this little block that I've made. Okay. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. If, if you've never done any 2D uh, stuff in Unity, I'll show you how to make a sprite at the end. I'm assuming most of you will know how to do that already, so I won't dwell on that yet. Then, in the start function, we've got a um, a for loop, and I'm creating 26 blocks. So the blocks that you saw go across the screen, I think this way. <laughs> We're gonna go 26 across like that, and then the Perlin noise, which is here, just drag that across slightly. This is gonna determine the height of each block. So your Perlin noise function will take in two parameters. And in fact, it's kind of like one dimensional. So I'm gonna leave the, the second parameter at zero. And then as we move along the X axis or as we look at each of the 26 blocks, um, the first parameter is going to increment. And then we're gonna divide that by 30. This parameter here, this argument, this 30, determines how smooth your Perlin terrain is going to be. So if you wanted a bit spiky, a bit more like Minecraft or something, if we put 7 in there, save the script, and then rerun our simulation, hopefully it'll be a bit spikier like that. So if that's the look you wanted, you could adjust like I've just done. And if we want that smooth again, I don't know, uh, I won't go uh, 42, a Douglas Adams number, save the script, run it again, it'll be really, really smooth, almost flat. There we go. That's really satisfying. There you go. Okay, the other number. I'm then um, multiplying the result of the, the Perlin noise by four. 
And that's your amplitude, that's like how big the, the peaks and troughs can get. The minus six here, that's just to adjust the whole terrain down. Um, okay, the X position is really just determined by incrementing through each block. Sorry, going this way. And this minus 7.8 just adjusts, sorry, this way, <laughs> adjusts the, the first block to start at the edge of the screen. I've just winged that. And then I'm dividing by 1.6. 1. 1. Uh, to, that determines where the block is going to be as we increment through the for loop. So I've just hacked that together. Um, so in the for loop itself, the first thing you want to do is create a new or instantiate a new game object uh, with the block type that you stored up here in this variable. And we're storing the game object that's instantiated in this game object variable called bx. I don't know why I call it bx, it just means like blocks or something. Um, so then we do the, the x position and the y position as determined by the Perlin noise. I've explained that bit. Um, and we apply the position to, um, to bx, so to the block that we've just instantiated. And I'm creating a new vector 3 because position is stored as a vector 3 in Unity. Uh, but I only need to uh, worry about the first two parameters, not the uh, Z position because it's just going to be on the zero um, plane. <laughs> and uh, so the first parameter is the X position. So that's just moving along the screen like that. And then the Y position determined by our Perlin noise, uh, which is controlled up here. And that's it. That's it. So when we start the scene, uh, Seedly, our empty game object, is holding that um, script and I populate it with a little block. Um, let me show you how to do that. So um, you go to game object, 2D object and sprite. We've got a new sprite somewhere here. <laughs> let's call him, let's call him Drobe in honor of, have I got your name right? Yes, Drope, in honor of Drope. I will call you Drope, little block. And then we want to give you the renderer, we want to um, use a grass dirt block, which I've dragged into my assets folder. I can't remember if I told you how I got that. I just put into Google, I just said 2D sprite block and it came up with lots of sprites and I just clicked on this one which looked nice because I saw this little dirt one and then I went to the website and it brought me to the wonderful opengameart.org if you haven't used it it's fantastic it shows you so let me just drag this into uh, into the screen uh, it gave me this 2D art 32 by 32 blocks by Entropy 5 well done Entropy 5 if you're watching Thank you for this block. It, you've made it public domain, which means we can use this in our projects. Uh, royalty free. Everything's nice and legal. Even make money off, off of our games and things. Uh, maybe if you make lots of money, send some money to Entropy Fire uh, for making this all free. Um, so I downloaded the blocks, unzipped it, dragged um, the sprite into my assets folder and that will give you this, this grass dirt block sprite. Then what you can do with your, with your 2D sprite, you can then populate that uh, sprite field with your sprite, your, your grass dirt block. Then Drope will look, oh there he is, then it'll look like this. Um, but he won't be hard, he won't have any collider on, colliders on. So what you have to then do is add a component, go down to Physics 2D and Box Collider. And that's already the right size, how clever Unity is. It, it looks at how big it is visually and then creates the right block size. And I believe I changed that to a block size of 2 uh, to look slightly better on screen. 
Okay, and then I made it, you need to then make it into a prefab, uh, prefab. so you drag it from the hierarchy into uh, your assets folder. And then if I click on Seedly again, we can now delete Drope from our hierarchy because we've got the prefab in our assets folder. Uh, but if we then um, go back to our Seedly um, game object with our script on, we can then populate the block type with drope instead. It should be exactly the same <laughs> as my little block that I made previously. Yes, there we go. So everything's working. Uh, so that's how to make 2D sprites that are solid in uh, Unity and, and how to create some 2D terrain. Drope, I hope that's what you were after. And I'm sorry that I, it took me ages to make um, this video. I haven't made a video for a while, so I was a bit all over the place <laughs> there. Hopefully that made some sense and was helpful. Thank you very much, uh, very much for watching. And apologies for the, the quality of the explanation, but there you go. <laughs>